a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of these viral headlines once again, in this case coming from a lot of different publications. Scientists say they've discovered a new color. Unprecedented hue only ever seen by five people. Now this one was from the Smithsonian magazine, so uh, I guess I expected a little bit more from them, but basically in this video we're going to discuss exactly what the scientists did here, how no new color was actually discovered, but how nevertheless this was a pretty intriguing experiment and something that was actually kind of hypothetical in the field of perception for many many years. With all of this coming from this study by James Fong, where the title unfortunately does suggest that this is a novel color. As you find out from this video, it's not, but the actual perception of this color was definitely new. But in order to understand exactly what this study is about and how this was achieved, we basically have to briefly discuss the color perception in our eyes and how most of us usually perceive colors. Because color perception and color sensitivity is the initial step in a much larger system known as the visual system that's mediated by extremely complex processes inside our brain. So basically when we look at things and when we see objects, it's a very complex multi-step process that obviously starts inside our eyes with our eye receptors. With very specific light sensitive cells we refer to as photoreceptors. And it's the signals from these photoreceptors that then go through various layers inside neurons, ultimately resulting in higher cognitive functions inside the brain, which then result in us perceiving various objects. And a typical human eye contains two types of photoreceptors. We have rods and cones. These are specialized light sensitive cells responsible for detecting and processing slightly different types of light. They're also different anatomically, and that's because the main purpose for rods is to enable night vision. They're basically able to respond to extremely low levels of light compared to their neighbors, cones. And cones only function in bright light and are specialized to detect very specific wavelengths. And here, normally, they're divided into three types, L, M, and S, responsible for long, medium, and short wavelengths, or basically red, green, and blue. So basically some cones are more sensitive to red, some are more sensitive to green, and some are more sensitive to blue. And here's what the actual retina of the eye looks like. You can sort of see rods and cones bunched together right there. And though in most humans we usually have three types of cones, which also applies to most monkeys and most apes, people who are colorblind will often lack one of the types. Which actually also applies to most mammals, including for example dogs and cats, and roughly about 25% of most humans. Likewise, some animals only contain one cone, for example whales and dolphins, yet some animals contain four. This seems to be true for quite a lot of different fish, for example reef fish, and also different types of birds. But it also happens in a very small fraction of humans too. But the thing is, for each of these cones, they generally have a kind of a sensitivity curve. You can kind of see it right here. And so for example, when we see something that's red, you'll notice that it will actually activate at least two types of these cones. M and L. Likewise, if we see something that's blue, it obviously activates the S cone quite a lot, but it also activates M and L, at least to some extent. And this is especially true of color green. We humans are exceptionally sensitive to green colors. And it's extremely likely because it seems to activate pretty much all of the cones, S, M and L, which then in our brain becomes green. But technically colors, like everything else when it comes to visual perception, is basically a learned concept. This is something that we acquire as we live and this is something that our brains learn as we basically see different objects and interact with them since childhood. And so in some sense a lot of these colors and concepts related to colors is a kind of a construct inside our brain. But for many years perception psychologists were actually wondering, okay so what would happen if you just activated one of these cones? Because as I mentioned before, most colors here activate at least two and a lot of colors activate all three. And so when we see something that's green, this is actually a result of three cones activating at the same time. But it's the M cone that's activated the most, with the L cone activated as the second strongest, and the S cone activated the least. In other words, a typical color green results in the activity of all three cones. And so various colors are just the result of the intensity of various signals from photoreceptors. And as you can see here, these M cones can technically respond to all colors, at least to some extent. Which means that no matter where you are in natural conditions, you basically cannot activate M cones without activating something else, either L or S or both. And so in perception psychology, and specifically for psychologists studying color perception, there's always been a question of these impossible or imaginary colors. Basically colors that 
technically should not be possible in natural conditions, but could be created as a result of specific interaction of photoreceptors. So for example, what happens if you just activate one type of a cone inside a typical retina? And so these unusual fictitious colors correspond to a combination of cone cells that would never be produced in natural circumstances in any possible light configuration. And there are at least three such colors known to us. They don't really have an exact name, but in this study, this new color is referred to as OLO, or technically 0, 1, 0. 0 activation for the S cone, 1 activation for M cone, 0 activation for L cones. Likewise, you should have LOO and OOL. And so in some sense, this OLO is basically almost like perfect green. The color that can only be seen if somehow you're able to activate only M cones and no other cones inside your eyes. But there's really no way to do this with anything in the physical world. None of the objects we know and none of the light we know can ever produce this. Yet somehow in this study researchers were able to achieve this and they did this in a somewhat impressive way. And actually a super time consuming way that would be extremely difficult to do using modern technology. Because here the first step was to scan the retina. And specifically scan it in order to produce a very detailed map pointing out exactly where each of the cones were. This was done by taking multiple videos of retina and then following an extremely laborious process where each of the L, M and S cones had to be labeled individually, showing the location for each of these cells in a really small part of the eye. And this had to be done individually for each of the five subjects because for everyone out there, this map is entirely different. Or basically all of us get very different cone classified retina maps and the cells are in completely different locations. Moreover, because a lot of these cells are so extremely close together, this could only be done for a very small part of the eye and only in the location of the peripheral vision. Because in the center of the eye, the cones are so close together that it's practically impossible to tell them apart. They are slightly farther apart on the edges, which is what was used in this experiment. And so once each of the cones was identified using a technique known as adaptive optics optical coherence tomography, or basically shining the light on the cells and measuring how they change shape individually, the researchers then could move on to the next step. And the next step involved what's known as laser microdosing. Here, each participant sat in front of a display and stared at the same point. And then by using a laser light and a technique known as laser microdosing, researchers were able to stimulate all of those M cones by targeting only those cells and nothing else. Or basically here, by using that previously made map, they were able to only target M cones, preventing S cones or L cones from activating. Which in this case created the sensation of very bizarre, super saturated green light that would be extremely difficult to explain. And here the participants were shown different images, with all of them reporting the images as being super super green, highly saturated and more green than anything they've ever seen. But mostly because their brains were just not used to it. Their brains have never experienced strong signals from the M receptors without receiving signals from anything else. And so in some sense this was basically kind of like a visual illusion. In this case an illusion of color. Here the participants compared this to a green laser pointer but with extremely high saturation. Essentially a kind of a hyper green. Something that would be completely off the charts when it comes to color space. Or basically here if we look at a typical color chart or a chromaticity diagram, it would be completely off the charts. Which essentially finally confirms that these imaginary colors are definitely possible. With OLO becoming the first color experienced by these five participants. But the claim is that this is a new color and that's unfortunately incorrect. This is definitely not a new color, but would definitely qualify as a new perception of color, something that most of us will probably never experience. But funnily enough, this new experimental technique is now referred to as Oz, named after the glasses that everyone was required to wear in the Emerald City in the Wizard of Oz. But despite this achievement, this was still an extremely difficult task and also is extremely unlikely to be practical anytime soon. And that's because once again, this was only used on a very small part of the map or a very small part of the retina located in the peripheral vision. On top of this, this could only be done if the person was not looking anywhere else, so the eye had to be completely still. And that's because here it's extremely difficult to localize the laser light. Each of these cones is so tiny that it's extremely easy to miss it. And so this current method depends on extremely accurate lasers, it also depends on the person not moving at all, and currently can only be used on peripheral vision and not on the entire eye. 
So this is maybe not something we can use for most of the applications in its current state. But there might be some application in the future. Because the goal here is to find a way to somehow program individual photoreceptors to respond to different types of light. And so by controlling retina at this extremely tiny level, first of all, it actually allows us to study vision in a lot more detail. For example, replicating various eye diseases and studying the effects of vision loss by using these extremely accurate lasers, but also maybe find a way to stimulate full color vision in people who are colorblind by basically mimicking certain photoreceptors through the use of these extremely accurate lasers. But that part is, of course, unclear. At the moment, I don't actually see how this could be done, just because of all shortcomings I just mentioned, with the biggest shortcoming being the fact that our eyes move all the time. And so for a colorblind person to be able to see something using this laser technique, we will have to have some advanced laser technology we just do not have. And so at the moment, this is really more of a theoretical concept and a really intriguing experiment that basically confirms the existence of these imaginary colors, but in terms of practicality, we might be still really far away. And so still a pretty exciting study and definitely an intriguing experiment, but maybe just a little bit misleading. Not a new color, a previously known imaginary color. A color that seems to be super green. But once there is something else discovered about this, or new experiments are conducted, we'll discuss this more in future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.